Hi, I'm George, and this time around I have teamed up with Boris FX, and they are sponsoring this video about Boris FX Optics so that I can give you a 20% discount. Now, this is a really powerful filter program. Here's an example right there. Now this plugin works either as a standalone in Windows and on the Mac, or it'll work as a plugin in Photoshop CC or Lightroom Classic, and also in Photoshop Elements if you have 2018 or later. Let's see how easy this is to use with a program. Let's first close this down. Here we go, and I'll close that. And we'll switch over into Photoshop. Here we are inside of Photoshop. And the first thing we need to do is to take our photo and get this set up to use with optics or with any filter for that matter. So I'll go over here and where it says background, I'll just right click there and duplicate layer. I always like to make a new layer and work on that just in case something gets messed up. I can always then go back to my background as a safety. So there we go. Now to make this easy to get back and edit again in the future, let's do one more step here. Right click where it says background copy and let's convert this to a smart object. There we are. Okay, we're all set now to go ahead and open up the Boris FX Optics plugin. For that, go up to Filter, and you'll find it right down here towards the bottom. There it is, Boris FX and Optics. Click on that. This will then open up this image over inside of Boris FX. There we go. Now, Boris FX runs the same whether you're using it as a standalone or as a plugin. doesn't matter. So over here, we have our current filter right there. And I'll just do a duotone. Click on this. This will bring up the duotone panel for us. There we are. And there's all the presets. I'll leave it at that default. That looks just fine. Now to get this back over into Photoshop, all you have to do is go up here and click that gear icon, which will say done. There it is. Click on that. This will then reload this back into Photoshop with that change on that layer. We'll see that happening here in just a moment. And there you go. Let's just drag down the layers a bit here. As you can see, it comes in here as a smart filters. So we can always go back and make easy adjustments on this just by reopening up optics right from here with that setting already in place. Okay, let's go back to Boris FX and take a look around the program. Now Boris FX has 160 different filters and they're grouped right down below here. We have color, diffusion blurs, film lab, gradients and tints, image, lens, light, render, and stylize, nine separate groups, and there are thousands of actual presets in here. And you can also save filters over to a favorites list as well. So it's very, very flexible and you can really customize it just the way you want. And not only does it have all of these different filters, including Emmy award winning filters, it also has layers on the left hand side. Here's the original layer and here's whatever the current filter is right here. And you can blend your filters together by adjusting the opacity and also by working with blend modes. So it's very, very feature rich and able to work with these in a very creative manner. And even beyond this, you can also come in and use masks as well, allowing you to show the filters on just specific parts of your image, not the whole image. Okay, let's take a look around and see what we have available in here. First off, again, layers left-hand side. That's also where you have your cropping and your masks. All that kind of stuff is over in here. Right here is a reset button if you want to get things back to normal. In the middle section, standard view stuff, zoom in, zoom out. Right here, you have zoom to fit. There's your zoom button, you can pan around. You can adjust your preview resolution right here. You also can put images side by side to compare before and after versions. You can take snapshots at specific points if you want to, and then go back to those snapshots. You can show your mask, see how that looks. And you can also bring up a histogram if you need to have that to help you work with your filters. On the right side are going to be all of your parameters and all of your presets showing over here. Let's see how this is done. I'm just going to go down here, go right back to the color setting on the left hand side over here. And we'll take a look at just a few of these. For instance, here's an auto adjustment. I'll click on this one. Auto color, auto contrast, auto levels in there. And then that's the presets and your parameters. Not much in here, but as far as these auto settings go, this is the best I've seen. I personally don't like auto settings in Photoshop or Lightroom. None of them seem to do a very good job as far as I'm concerned. This is right on. So these are just perfect on their auto settings. Here's a black and white conversion, and you have different options. This is a red, here's a green, blue, yellow, and orange, really putting emphasis on those. You can switch to different channels in here. You can set your whole screen to a specific color if you want to, and then use that to blend into your layer underneath. Let's just do one of those. I'll do a blue right here, and then let's adjust our blend mode here. Let's come down to a lighten, there it is. And then we'll adjust the opacity in here a little bit. So you can easily use these as photo filters to do tinting on your images very easily. And with our parameters, you can go for specific colors in here if you want to, choose any color that you want. So you have a lot more flexibility, not just the few colors that are shown here on the presets. 
Notice if I go on to another one of these filters down here, it replaces the filter I had up there. Now, if I want to have more than one filter, you can add in additional layers up here and then have stacks of layers with different filters on each one of those different stacked layers. And you find that right here, little add layer button right there, or you can right click on a layer and duplicate that layer if you want to do it that way as well. So again, a lot of flexibility over here on the left hand side. Right hand side here, here's our presets and here are the parameters for this. And you can see on this one, just how advanced these can get as far as your parameters. This is a great color correction tool in there. This whole section down here is one that you really should take a look at. For instance, here's a curves adjustment, standard develop adjustment in here. And then there are some fancier things like this fluorescent look or a haze effect in here or a high contrast effect. Now, one of the new things here in Burst FX Optics is the addition of sapphire filters. And they're pretty easy to see across the bottom down here. If you see an S in front of the filter name, this is one of these new sapphire filters. Click on hotspots right here. We'll bring this up. These have a different look. The standard Boris FX filters will have your thumbnail down here. Easy to see what it's going to be doing. These have this, it's actually kind of Saturn. We'll see that a bit later on, but it's just some phenomenal effects in here. Okay, we have Kelvin effects, levels, low contrast, match, ozone, polarizer in there, shadows, highlights, tone adjustment, just tons and tons of stuff. Let's go over here to diffusion and blurs. Some real interesting things in here. You can pull the slider control back. So if you have too many down below here, you can slide back and forth on that with this bar at the bottom. Here's some basic beauty filters. There we go. Here's a color correct green to blue. Gets out some of that nasty green effect in there and some special effects, kind of odd looks in here. And once again, loads and loads of parameters. Here's a standard blur filter. You also can blur by channels with some special effects style blurs like this Rapture. Now some of these effects also have controls right on your screen. You can see it right here, a little arrow control. And I can use this to adjust the blur amounts visually, just like that. So you have this really interesting adjustment technique. And you'll see this on a lot of these Sapphire filters where the adjustment is right there on the screen, making it real easy to control that in a very intuitive manner. Let's go a little further on this one. I'm gonna be setting this up as a side-by-side. -side. There we go, here's our new, here's the original. Let's look at some more stuff. Let's go over here to Film Lab and do some vintage color looks right over here. Again, this is one of these sapphires. And one of the tricks I've shown on my YouTube channel has been doing an antique film look. And I go through a whole lot of steps to get that antique film look. And let's just do that. Let's bring this up to 100%. And there we go. Let's set this here to a normal one. Instant antique look highly controllable again loads of parameters in here to work with on this so you can see how fast and easy that is that just replaced a whole video tutorial i did and this just replaces that whole thing in just a second like that so it's a phenomenal program over here to grades and tints a lot of fun stuff hiding in here another standard technique i've shown in whole videos is how to do duotones and here we go here's a duotone right there click on that one and simply choose your duotone right from here it's just that easy to do so saves you loads of work on a lot of these standard effects and you can then go back in and do even more advanced stuff with a lot of the other filters that are available in here let's take a look at just a few more of these in here here's an image effect we have sharpening detail denoise defog again a lot of things that you would normally want to do in here you can do it very quickly and easily as you can see here faster than can be done in photoshop or lightroom or even photoshop elements let's just switch over here and look at some fun stuff this time go down here to the lens flare now i've done some lens flare videos and the lens flares in the adobe programs are fairly limited you can do a little bit but there's not a whole lot of adjustments in there you have just three different lens flares and you can adjust the amount on that but over here in the presets, just take a look at all of the different lens flare designs we have here in the presets. I'm just going to scroll down through this thing. You can see how many of these you have to choose from. So if you like working with these lens flares, then this is the best way to do this, really. I mean, nothing else even comes close to having this much control over your lens flares and then complete parameter control. So anything you want to do with lens flares, you can do that here inside of Boris FX Optics. Let's jump over here to stylize. Look, there's just a few things available in here. Here's a real interesting look. Again, I've done whole videos on how to do this, and here you can do it in just a second, just like that. But let's say you wanted to do this and keep the girl as she was, but have this kind of an interesting background in behind her. Now I'll do it here with the blue effects up there. And for this, let's do a mask on this. Click on your mask button right here. You can then make a path 
do a gradient mask, do a spot mask, do a snap, easy mask, selection mask, or a paint mask. I'm just going to do paint mask in here. Now I have all of these tools up here to work with. Mask opacity, mask blurring right here, inner blur, center blur, outer blur on the mask, the brush size, brush softness, and brush opacity. Let's bring our brush size up a lot on this one. Let's do a drop down and a slider right there. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty good. And if I paint out here, notice how that mask is now masking out the background and showing me my foreground layer. That's the filter layer. And I'll just have it just blend in. It's just a little bit into her hair right here. So it's, as you can see, very easy to use this mask as well. So it's complete mask tools and use whatever technique or tool you like to use. But this oftentimes is just the easiest, just a real fast mask like this. There we go. And I'll just leave a little bit of the hair in like that. So you have complete masks as well, allowing you to do masks and filters and get just the look that you're trying for. If you want to see or work on just the mask itself, that's right here. It shows just the mask. This would allow me then to come in and clean up all those little spots that I wasn't seeing because the background was kind of making it hard to see. So very easy to clean your mask up as well. Click it again, you're back to your regular view right there. Now, if you have been playing around, you've been experimenting, you kind of have things messed up, you want to go back to the original, all you have to do is just hit this reset button right there and it resets back to the default setting. So it's that easy to get back to where you were. Also up here under edit, there's an undo as well, undo history. So I can go back to any of these steps that we did previously. I say I wanted to get back here to the Lemon Duo tone. I'll click on that one. Takes me right back to that look right there. So it has a very complete undo and redo history right here, easy to get to. So you're never at a loss. If you've been experimenting, you can always go right back to where you were before, find the stuff that you liked, and get right back to work at that point. Let's just scroll over here towards the right hand side on the stylized section. A couple more that I've done in the past. I've done whole videos on this effect right here. And here's a pencil effect. There it is, instantaneous, and it's done. Just go through and find the level that you want. Very, very easy for a real nice pencil effect. Now, if you want to blend this into this, I've done this for a lot of my effects. It's one of the major steps in a lot of the different effects that I've used is to blend a pencil effect into a regular image, which tends to just accentuate things. Let's do a lighten effect here. Let's do a screen. There we go, a bit of color in there, as you can see. Is a linear burn effect, real interesting effect in here, and also the color burn as well. It really accentuates the whole effect in here. It's a real interesting way of working with these pencil effects by just combining them or blending them in different ways into your original photo. Let's say I like this Pencil 4 effect. I want to use it again in the future. And when I lose that one, I'll just click on the Pencil 4. It's now highlighted, as you can see. Then go over here, click on this toggle favorite right there. Little star, it's now a favorite. And if I go down here to my favorites section, there it is on the favorites list. So it's easy to save the effects that you like the best, the filters you like the best, to your favorites. Then you can go back to them at any point without any problem at all. Now, up here on the file menu, just a couple more things I want to point out to you. Right down here, of course, we have open, close, and recent files in here. Your save and your save as. I'll click on save as. Let this open up. We're going to save it as a JPEG or as a TIFF. JPEG, of course, is going to be compressed. And TIFF is going to be uncompressed with layers, allowing you to then do more work on this later on if you want to in a different program. So you have those two options down there. You also have your preferences right down here. Not a whole lot, but you can adjust your thumbnail size and your preview resolution and so forth. There's just a few things in there that you may want to take a peek at. Let's take our sample image here just one step further and I'll make a new layer right there. There we go. Here's our new layer. And on this new layer, we're working on this one right here. It says current. Here's our pencil layer, our pencil effect right here. Here's our current layer, and let's come down to gradients and tints, and I'll click on our sepia tint right there. Lots of options. This is an orange look. This is one they call astronomical, but that's a pretty good look. And let's adjust the blend modes on this. Here's a darken effect on that. Here's a linear burn effect on that. Here's a screen effect on that. And let's look at a lighten effect. There we go. And then I can control how much of that effect is coming in by our slider control right here. So as you can see, very easy to come in and actually blend multiple effects together onto one image just by using your layers on the left hand side. So there you go. Real fast look around at just a few of the things you can do here inside of Boris FX Optics. I mean, this is such an amazing filter plugin for Photoshop Lightroom Classic and also Photoshop Elements it's well worth taking a look at this. Now you can get a free trial, so you can try it out, see if you like it or not. And then if you want to go ahead and get it, I do have that 20% discount. Just use the discount code. I'll put it right on the screen right there. I'll also put it inside the description as well, making it real easy to click on that link and then use that discount code. All right, don't forget to give this video a like and a share and also subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time.